Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity, and I am just absolutely thrilled to be casting these matches. This is from the North American King of the Hill matches that were played on November 16th at night. We've got Hawk versus Gypsy. Top players in North America on Vermeer. Hawk starting the upright in corner as the Blue Zerg bottom left in corner. We have Gypsy starting as the Yellow Terran. Now here's the thing. I will favor Hawk overall just because Hawk is currently, the st because of BSL, the standing North American champion. Gypsy, however, is incredibly strong versus Zerg and one of those guys who can pull games off anybody. Went very deep in BSL. The, I think, first season of 2021. BSL, oh, I'm going to missay this. Was it BSL 14 or BSL 13 that he did? I think it was BSL 13 that he had a really good run. Took a break previous BSL. But regardless, when I see these two play, more often than not, <clears throat> I will see uh, Hawk win. Although sometimes I feel like Hawk can falter versus Gypsy in particular when he he likes playing defensive and he likes macroing up and forcing his opponent to come to him. And then at that stage, just going for kind of pulling the trigger and going for the overwhelming attack force. Sometimes what happens in his play is his opponent will abuse kind of that mid game where he's playing a bit passively to go more macro oriented himself. I don't expect Gypsy to do that. Initial barracks being built. Hawk's incredible though. Natural expansion being grabbed after a 12 hatch. And it looks like he is sending out, I believe this is a scouting drone. We'll see if this ends up being a third hatch overall. I did have a great discussion with Hawk during some of these streams discussing the meta shift to the 2.5 hatch where he's just like, it's just a way better three hatch. And I have seen just general movements towards that play at large. Spawning pool being dropped for seeing a geyser around the two minute, nine second mark. <clears throat> so I think Hawk on this map is initially, at least the way he is, we'll see if he, he drops the third hatchery in base. But thus far, it looks like we are gonna see two hatch play. Drone scout checking upper left, making its way to the bottom left-hand corner. SCV, let's see if it goes for a cross map scout initially making movements that direction. It looks like instead, yeah, it looks like it's gonna go catty corner, find Hawk first. First Marine and SCV going to the low ground. Gypsy gonna risk going ahead, going ahead and grabbing that command center. I think he realizes that he hasn't seen any of these Zerg. Well, maybe it's like, okay, no Zerglings yet. So I feel a little bit safer or perhaps just playing his opponent, knowing that Hawk is more of a macro oriented guy and isn't gonna risk earlier pool builds on a gigantic map like this. SV looked like initially it was going to top right, but now repositioned, went to top left, single Marine making its way across. Second barracks being dropped as well. So it looks like we are gonna see some form of two racks build. See if it goes up to three. Lair being morphed. Overlord in the bottom right hand corner. No movements for any drones to seize additional expansions as of yet. And actually I'm wondering, so we got the initial two Zerglings out. Yeah, it's just going to be two hatch here to start. But no drone yet out on the field. So I'm wondering if we are going to see that third hatch in base. Yes, we are going to. So 2.5 hatch, and this is what it looks like. Now with the 2.5 hatch, it's a critical, first of all, to preserve early game Zerglings as they're produced because you just need them to be able to spot things. But this is another factor of the 2.5 hatch is because you're playing a little bit more defensively like this, that opens up some Marine counterattacks where they can go ahead and find overlords and pick them out in the field. And sometimes even make earlier game attacks, sometimes off tempo, like you expect in a PVZ. Additional Zerglings being produced. So Zergling Micro, very, very important early on. The SCV is able to confirm that Zergling count. The Zergling, oh, is this going to be sufficient to hold the ramp? Gypsy kind of cycling back in, back around. Additional Marines holding. Let's see if we we do have that Academy. And is this going to be a two, it looks like this might be a two barracks Academy push. Supply Depot on the front, no bunker as of yet. Yeah, Medic's being produced now. No third barrack. SCVs wiped out, Zerglings starting to make their way. So now Hawk is absolutely gonna need to drop some something calling something to defend this. Attack, move out momentarily. So Zergling's going to be able to stream down, at least spot that as, that, as that's coming. So 
I think this is a large enough with that distance and with that with that scout that is sufficient time to go ahead and get the something colonies down. I think that three might be required here. Two might be sufficient with the Zerglings. Looks like a lot of health has been preserved on them. So six Zerglings out in the field. I think Gypsy comps heading the front, realizing something colonies are going to be there in time. So going to go ahead and back out, drop two additional barracks, engineering bay in place as well, grabbing range to follow things up. The Mutalisks already taking flight. Plenty of larva to get out in the air. It looks like there might have been well, a little bit of a, we'll see at least five. Part of this build is producing a lot of Mutalisks mid-game. And I, one thing I love about it is typically when you see the three hatch where you're grabbing an exterior location, especially, and I think it's particularly strong in this map because you don't have like the, uh, you don't have the ramps where you can just drop lurker eggs to go ahead and, and keep Terran out for absolutely forever. But here on this, something I love about the 2.5 hatch is it just provides a good amount of map control at this stage of the match because you have a couple Zerglings out, you have the Mutalisks out, they start growing in numbers. So rather than getting pinned back into your base with Science Vessels sitting at the natural expansion and trying to eke out an existence as the Filers are coming online, instead, you're able to take forward positions like this. Zerglings getting pushed back, those medics actually drawing back off a little bit. Mutalisks checking that natural expansion. There's already two turrets up there. You have two turrets to the south as well. And Gypsy trying to create some positional threat out in the field. But with those two something colonies dropped, decent defense, plus one weapons being upgraded on the Mutalisks. And as this Mutalisk count grows, might be enough to go ahead and defend. Wow, going to go ahead and grab that 11 o'clock base well before the Hydralist den is out. Feeling comfortable enough. This is a large enough map to make that work. So Mutalus checking the Marine count at the natural. Thus far, really hasn't gotten a lot of harassment done. But at the same time, Gypsy has been mostly pinned in his base. Starting to move out with a sizable attack force now. Up 10 supply. And at a certain point, he is going to hit that critical point where he has enough Medic Marine where he can start pushing out in the field to start getting a bit of map control. Able to get a bit of damage on the Mutalisks on that corner. Looking for the additional Mutalisks for Hawk. Okay, now they're starting to group up midfield. Just eight right there. Gypsy trying to hunt them down. Zerglings to the east, and this doesn't seem like a sufficient enough attack force to engage this Medic Marine Ball wholesale. SCV starting to scooch out, maybe to get some additional scouting information. I don't think that's just... I think he's just trying to find where Hawk's next base is. Checking bottom right initially. So Gypsy holding midfield in the meantime. A bunch of Marines there to provide some support. Starport being dropped. Factory up. We already have the Queen's Nest. Hydralist Den though. Hive on the way as Lurkers starting to come into play. But Gypsy really has not taken any economic damage up to this stage. You have a lot of Mutalisks out to hold that Medic Marine Force back, but no SCV damage. Ooh, Mutalisk getting picked off there. Plus one weapons is online. This is one thing Gypsy excels at, is it's kind of the, well, as a bunch of Marines get picked off there, it's kind of this midfield advantage. Marine Micro, trying to stay in that open area. SCV getting picked off. Still holding position. The Mutalisk looking for Frey, realizing it needs to do a little bit of damage. That 11 o'clock base up and running. Creep Colony preventatively being dropped as another group of Medic Marines join the fray. Noodle is expended, able to pick out a bit of trooping. I think Hawk feeling better about that as plus one weapons is there. And now a big stim and a dash before lurkers are in place at the 11 o'clock as Gypsy commsats that. And I think he's going to get there in plenty of time before the Sunken Colony. The Noodle is trying to engage from the right, but this might be a death trap. As the Medic Marines move in, Zerglings crashing in. The attack force is split. The Medics have been boxed out in large number. So Gypsy takes out the Sunken Colony, but is not able to get any drone kills and loses the entirety of his attack force. So map control gone. He is going to be able to get science vessels up and running. But Hive is finished. The Filer Mound is making its way. Some Hydralis should be able to get in place. Yeah, to drop some lurkers in position. So Hawk 
exactly where he wants to be in a very nice defensible position. Nidus Canal coming online as well as Gypsy starts to push out with additional Medic Marines. I think he's, yeah, feeling relegated to play economic catch-up. So wants to go ahead and secure his third while he still can. Initial science vessels taking the field, plus two weapons being upgraded. We have six barracks out in the field. And right now, Hawk doing Hawk things. Starting to fill in that drone count. Evolution Chamber being dropped as well. Seen other players drop this much more, much earlier to uh, allow those Zerglings to have an earlier Carapace upgrade. But that Carapace upgrade going to be very, very nice for the Ultralisks that are inevitably incoming here. Potentially. Mutalis still being effective. Able to pick off additional Marines. Third base is up and rolling. The Science Vessel is holding position out to the left while trying to charge up that energy. Let's see if that Medic Marine Ball starts getting active. So you can see how much more... So now Gypsy starting to transition to try to get some map control. Some Lone Straggler Marines. I'm not sure if they were just out of the control grouping or what, but getting picked off to the right. Medic Marine Ball grouping up, but it just doesn't feel like there's enough out in the field and the Filers were already up for Hawk. Consumed just about to finish. Double Evolution Chamber. Triple Evolution Chamber to follow this up. I'm curious if this is going to be a Plague follow-up. Yeah, Plague instantly researched, so we're going to see that Hydralisk Plague style. Science Vessels able to drop and irradiate on those Mutalisks. There are a group of Lurkers right there. Ooh, not a great split, so those Mutalisks are going to get wiped out. But Honestly, not catastrophic losses for Hawk here. He still has a bunch of Lurkers on the front. He still has Dark Swarm. Science Vessels are moving up. They're going to go ahead and go for that Eraser Trick over that natural expansion. The Mutal's trying to dive forward. Several drones picked off with that. I don't know that it was sufficient. Some Marines, not sure why they're making their way to the bottom right. Maybe just have a presence to grab an additional base. Yeah, just checking to make sure an additional base wasn't picked off in theory so old school tvz strategy when it's three bases versus three bases the terran is in theory ahead however with this and the triple evolution chamber running with defilers and plague already out in the field i'm not sure that that's the case gypsy looking like he might want to take another shot at cracking hawk at the 11 o'clock again you can just see how he's just keeping troops out there it looks like he might want to go for another eraser trick at the 11. So making do. Scourge now moving up. That science vessel getting picked off. Another Radiate being dropped. We have more Scourge. This is one thing for Gypsy. He's got a fantastic science vessel count. The Medic Marines trying to push up. I think that might have been a, a misclick control for Gypsy losing those troops. But I like what Gypsy's doing. Making do. And he has pulled significantly ahead in the supply count. And he's done a great job of, despite having some Troubles in the early game. Wow, he's just going to go ahead and grab a base at the 9 o'clock as well. So I love this from Gypsy. He's like, let's play the Starvation Mash. Keep those drone, keep that drone count low. Double the workers currently for him. Let's see if he, he does have 8 racks. And he's got some Siege Tech in the form. Well, Siege Tank to build this up. So Hawk, and this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the match. Is sometimes Hawk, when he's in that defensive stance, when his opponent decides to get greedy which is what Gypsy's doing now. He sometimes can pull ahead in that regard. So I think this is Gypsy playing the opponent, realizing that Hawk, yeah, more often than not, likes playing passively at this stage and trying to be a tough shell to crack. And yes, he absolutely is. But Gypsy grabbing additional bases out here and grabbing all sorts of tech. Looks like he might even go for, yeah, a straight mech transition to deal with anything. And great play, honestly. So the upgrades are there. But with sufficient siege tanks, he should be able to melt through the Hydralisks. No plague on the Medic Marine out yet. The Hydral's starting to push out. Plus two weapons, no armor upgrade yet. So with that plus one armor, actually, those Hydralisks are going to be able to hit pretty decently. The Filer running out does get a little bit of a plague on some troops, but is going to be sacrificed otherwise. Hawk right now able to get back up to 35 drones. But he does need to start moving out and grabbing a fourth base to keep up with Gypsy's economy. As Gypsy is saturated that 9 o'clock. Is very close to 200 supply here. So Hawk starting to move out. Is under cloud. Some fire bats 
have joined that attack force. The Defiler quickly wiped out, and Gypsy pushing the rest of this back into that natural expansion. And I gotta say, Gypsy's done a fantastic job of dropping just con It feels like these science vessels, whenever they have had the energy, have dropped a radiate after a radiate after a radiate on top of Hawk's head. So Hawk with a very strong early game, but Gypsy turning it around with some greed and starting to march fire bats, siege tanks, medics, and marines. Oh my. Lurker is getting irradiated. This 11 o'clock base looking somewhat challenging to defend for Hawk. Some lurkers and hydralisks with the defiler sneaking out briefly, but I don't think this is sufficient to deal with everything that's out there. 200 supply for Gypsy as Hawk is now at 100. Huge supply lead. Lurker's able to push a little bit of that back. Siege tank's on that rear end, and now Hawk has to feel with those siege tanks sieging to the right that, oh man, may be in trouble here. I think he's trying to make motions to grab yet another expansion, realizing that he needs it to be able to stay economically relevant. But Gypsy with a huge attack force in between here there, including fire bats, to deal with some of that dark swarm, doing a pretty job of pushing this back. However, swarm, never mind. I was about to say swarm might let those lurkers get on top of those siege tanks, but it looks like a, a lurker has managed to get across. And the siege tanks still stand. The fire bats actually able to clear out what's left. So there's a single lurker to the north, more siege tanks roofing up to the south. Gypsy still has a massive amount of supply to work with. Some lurkers trying to flank from the rear. But reinforcements getting obliterated, and now I don't know that Hawk has enough gas to hold back everything that Gypsy's tossing at him. More reinforcements streaming across in the form of science vessels and everything else. Regrouping. Firebat gets wiped out there. But the Zerglings, yeah, aren't going to be sufficient. Lurker going to buy a little bit of time here for Hawk. Some more Defilers making their way to the south. But as the Siege Tank count grows outside the natural expansion, the Science Vessel count is huge. Nearby, Gypsy is starting to close this game out. Massive amount of Fire Bats to deal with that Dark Swarm. You can just toss these troops out. More Radiates being dropped. Honestly, there's probably an irradiate for every single one of these Mutalists. Gypsy losing a siege tank to one of them. See if the Marines can push up to deal with that threat. The Scourge not able to connect. And yeah, now Hawk in a desperate situation where he's still been boxed to three bases. The science vessels are nearby. The siege tanks are on top of him. Desperately trying to take care of the siege tanks with dwindling amounts of Mutalists and just barreling everything he can to try to sneak out, dropping now to 50 supply. Triple supply lead for Gypsy. Finally lose, well, finally losing a science vessel. I don't think he had lost one up to that stage. Command center being built upper left. I take it back. There's one that was lost at the 11 o'clock location, but Firebat's now diving into the natural. Medic's there to support. Plus one armor, plus three weapons, a defense matrix on the front. Hawk dropping the GG right there. And Gypsy showing why he's so strong versus Zerg and also so strong against opponents where he's well studied. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I am hyped to do the rest of the series for you guys. Thank you for listening.